Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whenever you may be watching this. So, Joe here with Joe Sober. So, I've been making videos for quite a while to YouTube. I've done all kinds of different things from motivational videos to, you know, building out my car and trying to live out of it and just trying to follow uh, all the things that were popular, I guess, at the time. Now, not just popular, but things that I was interested in. You know, I still am somewhat and in getting more interested in getting back into building out a car uh, or, or a van specifically uh, and being able to travel around, especially with what I'm trying to do now. So, you know, I had started praying to God and asking him, you know, how I can help people. You know, what is something that I'm good at that I can use to help people? And it just coming, kept coming back to me as, you know, sobriety. You know, coming up on Friday, this Friday, November the 3rd, uh, I'll celebrate five years sober. In the past, between 2010 and 2014, I had a little under four years sobriety because I started in July and I relapsed in April of 2014. So it was a little less, it was about three years and eight months. And both times I've done it completely different. Uh, the first route, I went to rehab, I went to AA meetings, I did all that. This time, I've done it a different way. And I'm not trying to bash on AA, uh, but what I'm going to do is just try to let people know that there's different ways to get sober uh, and go over some of the myths and everything like that and start making videos about things like that. Uh, you know, I've been trying to follow all the gurus with my videos on, you know, you need this, you need that. You know, your videos have to be this long. You know, you need a lot of editing. You know, you need fancy thumbnails and everything like that. But you know what? I'm just going to follow my heart. I'm going to be me. And I'm just going to talk about, you know, sobriety, what it means to me, you know, why I think a lot of people uh, don't get sober, uh, why I know I didn't get sober for the longest time, and uh, just try to break up the stigma about alcoholism and addiction and everything like that. So, you know, I'm just going to be me. And hopefully I can help some people. Uh, if I can help one person, that's great. You know, I've been writing a book. Uh, that nobody really knows about, about the, a different way to look at sobriety in ways that I've done at this time over the past five years, uh, knock on wood, coming up on five years on Friday in two days. Um, but, you know, I just want to try to help people, uh, you know, and, and go from there. So, um, you know, like I said, back in 2010, uh, I got sober and I did AA meetings. I went to rehab and all that stuff. And it was great um, at the time. This past time, you know, I did it a whole different way. You know, I kind of um, sat back, looked at, uh, you know, alcoholism, what alcohol does to uh, your body, to your organs, to your brain, and everything like that. You know, and alcohol is one of the most dangerous and addictive substances out there and but you know mainstream media and everybody because of financial gain from the alcohol industry and and stuff like that you know pushes everybody to drink it you know it, it's a lot more it, it kills more people every year than heroin and a couple other drugs combined I used to know exactly what that stat was, what the other three drugs were. I will in my next video have what that is. But, you know, and society, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinions, has it wrong. You know, it's you're looked down on and you're looked as weird and different if you don't drink, you know. But, I mean, if you knew somebody or know somebody that's recovering from heroin addiction, you know, meth uh, amphetamines, you know, smoking crack, smoking meth, something like that, you know, you would lose your mind if you were somewhere and somebody said to them, hey, man, why don't you hit this pipe? And they said, no, uh, I quit uh, smoking crack. And the person said, oh, well, just do, you know, one's not going to hurt you. You know, why can't you just, you know, take one hit? But that's what people do with alcohol. You know, somebody who's quit drinking, whether they think they have a problem, uh, whether they're sick, you know, whether they're on medicine, 
uh, whether they're pregnant, you know, they're a female and they're pregnant, you know, people look at them, you know, the pregnancy one's a little bit different, but, you know, if someone says, oh, no, I'm not drinking, I quit drinking, you know, they get the, they get all these questions, you know, why do you quit drinking? You know, you can just have one, one's not going to hurt you, you know, and I dealt a lot with that because a lot of my friends that I grew up with and stuff like that, you know, we were all big drinkers, you know, and some of them don't understand the fact and I still have to explain to them and try to get through to them that, hey, you know, when I have one drink, all bets are off. You know, a lot of people didn't know, like, you know, we would go out places and we'd be drinking, have a couple of drinks, go out to dinner, have some drinks. Well, they'd all go home. Well, Joe didn't go home. Joe went to the bar. You know, I'm going to go to the bar and have one or two more and then I'll go home. And next thing you know, the bar is closing time. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, you know, and I still haven't gone home, and I'm three sheets to the wind, you know, and there's been a lot of times that, you know, I don't know how I got home, and I know I shouldn't have drove, but, you know, by God's grace, I made it home without injuring anybody else or myself, uh, and, you know, I look back on that, and, you know, I'm shameful of it and embarrassed, um, but, you know, Alcohol, you know, with all the advertisements on TV and magazines, you know, on TV shows showing the cool people all drinking and all the rich people all drinking and stuff like that, you know, it's, you know, pushed on us that, you know, if you want to be rich, if you want to be famous, if you want to be cool, you know, you need to drink and you need to drink all these different kinds of alcohol, you know, and all these celebrities are coming out with their own kind of, you know, bourbons and tequilas and beers and, you know, all kinds of different spirits. And, you know, they know people will buy it because they know they have following and they know they have fans, you know. And that's one idea that I had years ago. And I think I've, you know, told a couple people about it that I think is starting to take off. It's just I never had the money to do it. But, you know, open sober bars. You know, there's so many different companies that make 0% alcohol you know, beverages these days, whether it's beer, whether it's bourbon, tequila, you know, seltzers I saw the other day online that are all 0% alcohol, you know, and, you know, some people like to taste of beer. They don't drink to get drunk, you know, they like to taste of bourbon. They like to sip on a bourbon and smoke a cigar, or there's people that like to sip on a tequila, you know, and they don't do it because they want to get drunk and, and, you know, three sheets to the wind, they do it because they like the taste of it and it's something that they enjoy doing. Um, you know, I've got, uh, I've had bottles of the 0% bourbon. Uh, the first one I had, I wasn't the biggest fan of. The one I have now, you know, it, I like it a little bit more. Uh, you know, the 0% uh, alcohol, like beers. You know, I've had the Budweiser Zero. Uh, you know, I, I've had... Uh, I believe it was the Heineken Zero and stuff like that. And I think there's a bunch more now, um, you know, but in certain areas of the country, only certain ones are available. And we need to make them avail the all of them available throughout the country, you know, because there's a lot of people that, you know, don't want to drink, whether they're alcoholic or not, but they don't like the feeling of waking up the next day having foggy minds, feeling like crap, you know, being hung over. Uh, and you don't get that when you drink these zero alcohol beverages. And, you know, one of the cool things that I'm seeing online right now, uh, because my Instagram page and everything, just like my YouTube page, you know, I'm pushing a lot of things uh, about no alcohol. You know, my Instagram page is called uh, Joe Sober, uh, at the Joe Sober. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm showing a lot of videos on there. Uh, with celebrities and famous people that talk about quitting drinking, just like I've done on here with shorts and everything, and letting people know what alcohol does to the body, to the mind, uh, and how it just kills you from the inside up, out, you know, and it, it's just absolutely terrible. But no one wants you to know this because the amount of money that's made off of it, um, you know, it, it's ridiculous. But, you know, it's, it's you know, basically it's, it, it's a poison that we're encouraged to drink. That's crazy. You know, doctors, 
you know, the people that make this, everybody knows what it does to your body and how it kills you from the inside out, but yet you're encouraged to drink it. Uh, and, and it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, you know, and, you know, I've been, been there where, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to just have a couple drinks tonight. And there was times that I could do that. But nine out of ten times, once I started drinking, bet, all bets were off. Um, you know, and, you know, going to bars and buying everybody shots and drinks, trying to feel important, make myself feel good about myself, uh, make myself feel like I was, uh, you know, important and, you know, people really liked me. But, you know, it wasn't that really people liked me. It was people liked the fact that I was buying them drinks, you know, because, if I got a good paycheck when I was in sales and I was drinking, everybody was drinking. If I was having fun, everybody was having fun. You know, and it would be nothing to wake up on a Saturday, having been out Friday night, waking up on a Saturday and seeing that your credit card was ran for 300 and some dollars. And then waking up that next morning on Sunday and having the exact same thing. Uh, and then being like, well, how am I going to pay my bills? You know, being single with no kids, never married, and, and living in a place where rent was about $500, had about a 300 to $400 car payment, making over 60 grand a year and having issues paying your bills because you're spending all your money on alcohol, trying to be cool and impress people is not a way to live. But, you know, I was always, when I was younger, scared of getting sober because I always thought, you know, how am I not going to have a drink uh, at my wedding, you know, how am I not going to be able to have champagne? You know, if I have children, how am I not going to be able to drink, have a drink with my buddies and, and family to celebrate that, you know, and it, if you don't drink, man, life's going to be boring. You got to drink to have fun, um, you know, and that's just not the case. Um, but I think that's why a lot of people don't get sober is because, they fear that they're going to not be any fun. They're not going to have any fun. Their life's going to be boring and they're not willing to give it a chance. Uh, and it's the exact opposite of that because you're able to do more things that you truly want to do and truly care about doing because you're not hung over every weekend. You know, you're not waking up at 11, 12, one o'clock in the afternoon on Saturdays and Sundays because you're out to two, three o'clock in the morning absolutely obliterated, drunk, not being able to speak, um, you know, and also uh, when it goes back to like AA and stuff, a lot of people th are told that the only way for them to stay sober for a, for a long time is that they have to go to meetings for the rest of their life, you know, for some people that's great and for some people that works, but for some people it doesn't and, you know, that's just what I... I want to do is let people know that, you know, there's different ways to be sober and stay sober. It does that, you know, just because Alcoholics Anonymous uh, works for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for the next. You know, same with, you know, NA, Narcotics Anonymous. Now, most of the stuff that I'll get into on here is going to re, uh, be in regards to alcohol and stuff like that, but you can kind of put narcotics into that situation. It's just you know, I really never had any big issue with narcotics. Last time I was out, you know, I did dabble uh, in some things, uh, you know, a couple times. Um, but, you know, my thing was drinking. And uh, so that's what I know and that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, but you can substitute, I think, a lot of times, you know, drugs with alcohol. Uh, now, there are some things like with drugs that I'll, I'll openly admit that I don't understand. You know, when people do heroin and they know that if they stick that needle in their arm, they have a 50% chance of living and a 50% chance of dying. And to me, that just, those odds are not good. That's like playing Russian roulette, you know. And like I tell people all the time, if I was told, you know, if you take that drink, you know, as soon as you take it, you could die. There's a 50% chance you're going to kill over dead or there's a 50% chance you're going to live. I would have quit drinking a long time ago, um, you know, to, but, you know, that's just, I think, something that's different between alcoholics and addicts uh, and the way maybe our wine, our minds and brains are wired differently. 
know, I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or indifferent. It's just something I don't understand. You know, that, you know, I've heard people say that they had a needle in their hand, they're getting ready to stick it in their arm, and someone tell them, you know that there's a 50% chance that you're going to do that, You're it's going to kill you. And they look at them and say, yep, as they're plunging the heroin into their veins. And, you know, that to me is absolutely craziness. But, you know, like I said, that could be the difference in how our brains are wired between alcoholics and drug addicts. Um, you know, but like for me, this last time, I was able to quit drinking and smoking at the same time. Um, you know, the first time I went to rehab and did all that, you know, I, I didn't quit smoking. You know, I kept smoking. I, I eventually quit. But then when I relapsed, you know, I started smoking and, and drinking all over again. Um, but, you know, so everybody's different. And that's the point that I want to make to everybody is, you know, just because you try to get sober and say you went to AA uh, and that didn't work doesn't mean that there's not another way that you can do or try to get and stay sober. You know, there's celebrate recovery. Uh, there's the first principles thinking method. Um, there, there's all kinds of different things. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing I think is you've got to take it one day at a time. You know, a lot of times in my early sobriety, when I did the first time I was sober, I was looking ahead. You know, what if this? What if that? Instead of concentrating on right now and today. And, you know, the past is the past, and you can't go back and change it. You know, the future is not guaranteed, so we have today. But you can look into the future, and you can see what you want in the future and who you want to be and things that you want to have, like a family, a house, a good job, you know, be an entrepreneur and work for yourself. And the things you do today can get you to that point. And one of them, a lot of times, I think, is being sober because you're clear-minded and you're thinking straight. Now, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, it's healthy to have a couple drinks a day uh, or a couple, you know, it's healthy to have two glasses of wine a day or drink two beers a day. And I think there's studies now, I'm pretty sure, coming out uh, saying that that's the exact opposite because I know drinking gives you... Uh, a higher percentage of having different types of cancer, um, you know, because we all have cancer living inside of us that's dormant, but there's things that trigger it to become live and give you the actual disease of cancer. And in certain cases, some of those are triggered by alcohol. So, you know, I just, I'm not saying that everybody has to quit drinking, you know, but I would think that if you if you Googled or got on YouTube and type in what does alcohol do to your mind, what does alcohol do to your brain, what does alcohol do to your body, a lot of you would quit drinking after you see what alcohol and the poison that it is, what it actually does to your body um, and to your brain and how it stunts your growth. And, you know, I'll be honest, you know, when I graduated high school, I didn't know this for a lot of years after, but I, somebody that, one of the teachers at the high school, who was also one of the football coaches, um, had told my parents that a lot of teachers didn't know if I would graduate and that I was kind of a punk. And I never knew that. I always thought all the teachers liked me. I thought I was a good kid, this, that, whatever. But towards the end of my high school career, uh, being in high school, you know, is when I started drinking, you know, and I didn't play football my senior year. Uh, and I used the excuse that the guy that I was going out up against, Dad was the offense coordinator. And, you know, no matter how much better than him I was, I wasn't going to get to see the field. So therefore, you know, I'm not going to waste all this time. And partially, I th and I, I still believe that partially, but a lot of it had to do was that I had started drinking and I didn't want to give up the drinking which I'd have to do in the summer and everything like that to be working out to be able to play football. You know, and then when I went to college, I went to a small school and I was going to walk on there and I was delusional because I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to be a stud down here because it's a uh, NAIA school and I played at one of the, in one of the top high school football leagues in the whole country, you know, and I'm going to be a star down here and I'm going to make it to the NFL. And it was all delusional. You know, it was all delusional. Um, 
you know, and a lot of that I put on drinking. And at the first semester I was in college, my grade point average was a .095 or .092, something like that. Because before I ever made it to a class, I already knew where the bootlegger was because it was a dry county. Uh, the place that I went to college was in a dry county. But, you know, before I knew where any of my classes or anything like that were, I knew where the bootlegger was so I could get my alcohol. Um, and basically, after two years of doing that, you know, I did get hurt down there uh, in fall camp or summer camp before uh, the season started. And then by the time that, you know, I was healed, I was drinking so much that, I wasn't wanting to give that up. You know, I'll just start over next year in spring ball. And same thing. It was just a, a bad cycle. And uh, my parents finally said, look, you know, if you don't get these certain grades this last semester of your sophomore year, then, you know, we're done. You're coming home. And I never thought they'd do that. And uh, I ended up not getting the grades that I needed. And Ended up coming home and worked, you know, minimal jobs here and there and lived in uh, uh, a college town and partied a lot and stuff like that. But when the first time I got sober, um, after I got sober and did all that, you know, I got laid off from the job I had been working. And, you know, I ended up going back to college to a community college uh, here where I live. And, you know, it's not the dean's list. It, maybe it's the president's list or something like that they call it in there. But every semester or quarter, whatever we were on there, I was making the, that list. You know, I had like a three point, I think a 3.8 grade point average, you know, and it was because I was, you know, clear thinking. My brain wasn't in a fog because I wasn't drinking and I had been sober for, I think at the time when I started that, I was had been sober for maybe about six months or so. Maybe it was a year. I can't remember. But, you know, and, and I did good. Now, I didn't end up finishing. But, uh, you know, I think I was a couple quarters away or uh, classes away from getting an associate's degree. Uh, but I got a job opportunity that I, I felt like was better than finishing that. Uh, but, yeah, I, I was made what was equivalent of the dean's list for, like, you know, let's say I was there for, six quarters or six semesters, I made that four or five out of those six. And the ones that I missed was only off by a percentage point. So, you know, it, it's just amazing. You know, my, my mind and my body had healed, but my brain had healed a little bit. And I was able to concentrate, not be in the fog and pay attention to what I was doing. And I was very successful at it. So, you know, it's amazing what you can do when, when you get sober. And, you know, for all the young people out there that think, oh, man, you know, I'm going to lose all my friends. You know, my life's going to be boring. You know, all I'm going to have to do is go to meetings all the time. Um, you know, that that's not 100% the case. And the friends that you do lose because you quit drinking, they weren't your friends to begin with. They truly didn't care about you. Um, you know, anybody that says, oh, well, I can't hang out with you because you quit drinking, you don't need them in your life anyway. You know, and a lot of people do go to meetings the rest of their life, and they love it. They absolutely love it. You know, I know people from when I was in AA the first time that, you know, have been going to AA meetings for 40-plus years, and, you know, that's their life, but they love it. You know, they've got great friendships and great groups of friends and stuff like that, and that's one thing, you know, this time doing it the way I have is, you know, I kind of miss that camaraderie. Uh, but, you know, there's certain things that I don't agree with, with, you know, like right now, because I don't, I've been sober for almost five years and haven't done one single AA meeting in those five years, I'm what they consider a dry drunk. Now, you know, what that basically says is, oh, you know, you're not doing it our way, so there's an issue. And I don't agree with that. You know, I should be able to go to parties AA parties and stuff like that and not be criticized because I don't go to AA meetings. I'm sober, you're sober. I just got there a different way than you did. Both legal, both helpful. But, you know, to me, I look down on the fact that the way AA looks at it is if you don't do meetings and you don't do the steps and you don't have a sponsor, you're what they consider a dry drunk. 
And I just don't think that's right. You know, you're penalized, you're penalizing somebody for, for getting sober their own way in a way that works for them, but you're penalizing because it wasn't your way. And I just don't agree with that. You know, everybody has the right to get sober the way that they need to get sober. Uh, you know, there's a big thing right now with people, you know, not as much in the alcohol, uh, AA or Alcoholics Anonymous and with alcoholics, but more with addicts and drugs about, you know, methadone and, you know, Suboxone and stuff like that. But, you know, if, you know, because I've heard that like with methadone, it, it's it's easier to get off heroin than it is methadone and different things like that. Now, I'm not a doctor, you know, so I'm just saying what I've been told from people who have done these uh, different treatments and everything like that. But, you know, if it gets you sober and keeps you sober for a long time and stuff like that, then and it's legal and it's prescribed just because it's prescribed by a doctor doesn't mean it's good because that's where we're at. That's why we're at. Where you're at with a lot of these opiate addictions and stuff like that from pain pills. But, you know, if it's something that helps you and, you know, helps you get off the drugs, helps you get your life straight, helps you get your mind right and everything like that, then, you know, good for you. You know, I'm not somebody that's got to take uh, medicated assisted therapy or treatment uh, that they call it. You know, if that works for you and it keeps you uh, sober off a of heroin or crack or whatever it may be, or if, if you're one of the people that might have to do it because of alcohol, that, then, you know, good for you for taking the route and doing it the way that helps you. Um, so, you know, it's like I said, what works for one person might not work for the next. Everybody's different. You know, that's why with weight loss, you know, you see somebody who loses a lot of weight, then you try doing that. And it doesn't work for you like it worked for them. It's because our bodies are different and things work different for everybody because we're all different. And so we have to keep that in mind. And we need to be there for each other. Uh, you know, not bash people because they do AA, because they don't do AA, because they do NA or they don't do NA or because they do medical, um, you know, treatments, uh, medicine assisted or medical assisted treatments or medical assisted therapy, whatever you, whatever it's called. Or I know it's like hashtag Matt, M-A-T. So, you know, but be there for each other. We all need to work together. You know, just recently, uh, we lost somebody that was, uh, recovery in recovery with Matt, Matthew Perry. Um, you know, and, they said that at the time of his death, he had been sober for two years and there weren't any drugs or anything like that found at his house besides prescription, met his prescription medicine. And it supposedly was a accidental drowning. But, you know, um, a lot of people are speculating that there more might come out of that. Uh, hopefully not. But, you know, either way, it's a sad case um, because, you know, of what he went through and in the spotlight, you know, a lot of us, you know, we get off easy. We don't have to go through with the lights and spotlight on us, uh, going through and fighting our demons. Uh, but these celebrities do, you know, and a lot of people think, Oh, well, you know, what's wrong with these celebrities? You know, they got everything that you could ever want, all the money in the world. They can get on a private jet and fly wherever they want, whenever they want. You know, they can have any girl they want or any guy that they want, any house, any car, you know, why is it that they have to turn to drugs? You know, why are they all doing drugs and this, that, whatever, you know? They have all this money. They should be happy. Well, it just shows that money can't buy you happiness and that we all have demons and different issues that we deal with, um, you know. But there's also a lot of celebrities out there that, you know, don't have alcohol or drug issues that are deciding to get sober. They go on these 30-day or 60-day or, you know, year-long challenges and stuff like that or, however many day challenges and then they realize like getting up in the morning like man i'm a lot clearer when i get up when i haven't drank even you know though i only drank usually a glass or two of wine or a couple beers a night or you know i had a couple bourbons uh sipping on bourbons and stuff but you know i, I i'm not you know i have a lot more energy when i get up in the morning i i, I want to do stuff i don't want to just sit around um so you know there's a lot of people these days that are getting sober that you know, don't have the 
the quote unquote al alcoholism or drug addiction. It's just that, you know, they're finding out what their life can be like when they don't drink or they don't dr do drugs or they don't smoke weed. Um, you know, they're finding out how much clearer they think, how much more energy they have. They look and see what alcohol and drugs do to your body and how they kill you from the inside out. And they're like, you know, I, I don't want that. You know, we've got one life to live and so many people uh, just destroy it with by drinking and drugging. And, you know, even if you're just a, a weekend warrior when it comes to drinking or you just have a couple drinks here and there, you're still slowly killing yourself from the inside out um, with alcohol. And like I said, it's crazy. It's a poison that we are encouraged to drink. And that's just nuts. So I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Hopefully, um, you know, this might help somebody. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll help anybody in the, any way I can with, you know, trying to provide information on different uh, ways to get a hold of people or organizations in their area. Uh, but, you know, if, you know, one of the key things you can do if you want to quit drinking, uh, you want to get, get off drugs is just go to, I think it's AA.org or NA.org, and you can find numbers for places in your local area who can connect you to people that can get you to meetings, can get you into therapy or treatment or whatever you may need. So once again, I want to thank everybody for watching this. Um, you know, I'm just trying to help people uh, that might be struggling with wanting to get sober and how to do it. And, you know, I've got some, some experience in that and I just want to, to share my experience. So till next time, go out, help somebody, have a great day and tell somebody that you love them.